Hey everyone, Sam here. Let's get started. So uh, for those that want a little more information than we'll have time to go over today with the topic, um, there's always the workshops on the screen there. Uh, those are free. And um, if you've been trading for a while or are you know not new to the supply demand strategy, and obviously that advanced workshop would be for you. And this is just in case you want more information than we have enough time to go over here today. Great to see everybody. We are going to dive right in. Make sure you understand we are not investment advisors and there certainly is no guarantee of success when it comes to trading. In fact, available research suggests that the majority of active traders lose money. Um, the last uh, couple of webinars I know I have done have really been around the theme of just all the different risks related to trading because it is a, it is a big topic. If the majority of people, active traders, lose money, it is something that um, we should be spending a lot of time on, right? And I think we have the last uh, couple of YouTube sessions. So if you want more on that, just you can you can always watch those. But just remember, you know, no one's pushing anyone to trade their own account. Make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. The risks are very real. Make sure you understand the risk. You're okay with the risk and, uh, and all that. Okay. Uh, today's topic is, yeah, great to see everybody again. Uh, you should be able to hear and see the screen okay. All right. Um, so today's topic is finding the evidence with multiple time frame analysis. Okay. Um, from my experience, um, this is just my opinion, is that one of the things that active traders, you know, swing traders, what have you, uh, have trouble trouble with or struggle with is um, multiple time frame analysis, right? Um, it's, it's, it's a topic that confuses a lot of people and totally understandable. And even people that ask questions about it or talk about it, uh, you can even tell in the way people talk about multiple time frame analysis or questions that people ask, they don't even really understand the purpose of looking at multiple time frames. What does it all mean? Well, we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, we're going to do a combination of looking at some recent opportunities um, from our live trading and analysis sessions from this week. And then we're actually going to dive into the live markets and demonstrate the use of them. Okay. But remember, you know, I've, I've used this analogy so many times, but I just can't think of a better one that fits. Some people say, um, you know, I use you. Someone uses the sixty-minute time frame, or the five-minute time frame, or they're a two-minute trader, or my trading time frame is this, and my analysis time frame is that. Right? Be careful with any of those thoughts. Be careful. Uh, um, let me give you an analogy. When you go to the doctor or hospital because you hurt your knee, right? and maybe you get an x-ray or an MRI, right? Do they ever take one picture or do they ever look at one image? No, they look at, you know, they take multiple pictures with an x-ray of different angles of your knee. Uh, MRI, they're looking at many, many different images of the knee, right? But at the end of the day, it's still the same knee, it's one knee. They're just looking at it from multiple angles. Now, remember who's doing this. These are x-ray people and MRI people that are taking these pictures and images. And then there are doctors looking at this stuff. Both groups, this is what they do for a living. They do it every day, most of the day. So, you know, how many knees do you think, uh, you know, a, a doctor looks at that deals with that, right? Over a week, over a month, over a year. So you would think that one picture or one image should do it, but that's not the case. It's always multiple images. It's always multiple pictures, but it's still the same knee. And the pictures look different. Why do they do that? Really think about it. Why do they do that? They know there's a problem. 
they probably have a general idea of what the issue is, but they want, they need to find the evidence to confirm it. And that key word is evidence. Okay. They need to find the evidence. So do they know, even though they have so much experience, they still use multiple pictures, multiple angles, but eventually they say, aha, there it is, right? Either our thought was right, there's the evidence to support it, or no, we were wrong, but there, there's the new evidence to, to tell us what the issue is. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand that? Um, that is multiple time frame analysis. There's not one chart, one time frame that means anything more or less than any other time frame. There's, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone say, ooh, the 264 tick chart or something like that. It's like, it doesn't mean anything, right? These are all different pictures of each market, right? If we're talking about the S&P, multiple time frames, multiple pictures of one S&P market, one supply demand relationship at each price level. We just have these different images and pictures just like the X-ray or MRI. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand that? So let me share with you, uh, and we'll run through this kind of quick because I want to get to the live markets. And um, so these are all from this week. The screenshot on the left, these are our live trading and analysis sessions. Through the workshop, all of you can have an opportunity to join these uh, for a week. But anyway, um, take a look. So the week began with the uh, S&P and most major stock markets trading down to our qualified demand zone. Uh, prices then turned and throughout the week and into today rallied up to the supply zones, right? And prices in any market is always just moving from supply to demand, you know, and, and back again until the orders are gone, right? That's how markets work. Now, notice this is a 30 minute chart. Is there anything special about the 30 minute chart? No. And notice if you understand futures and if you don't, it's okay. This is the S and P dot D that's a, that's a diff separate symbol from the regular, just the S and P meaning it's the same S and P, but this is not the 24 hour view of the S and P. So this is the day session only chart of the S and P futures on a 30 minute chart. Now, why did we choose that? Because that's where the evidence was, right? We didn't start here. We don't trade off a 30-minute chart. We don't do our analysis just off a 30-minute chart. 30-minute chart doesn't mean anything to us other than it's another, another uh, you know, angle to look at the evidence. And the evidence we're looking for is where is that significant supply-demand imbalance, right? That's the evidence we're looking for. So it showed up pretty clearly here. Okay. Right around that same, you know, same time or day period, whatever. The Dow, notice the screenshot on the left here. So this is when we were going over this, the Dow live in our session, right? This is pre-market. Here, we're looking at the ETF for the Dow on a 60-minute chart, right? Why, why choose that? Well, we didn't choose it. It chose us, right? It's, it's all about the evidence. So... At the time we were going over this opportunity, notice the demand zone there, price was actually gapping up to here. We knew that because of pre-market prices. So we knew at this time during this session, price was actually up here. It was gapping up. That was earlier, just as, I don't know, two, three days ago. Okay. Um, therefore, we had a qualified demand zone right here where we want to be a buyer if the risk and reward you know, met our criteria. But again, why the, why, why the Dow ETF in a 60-minute chart? Because that's where the evidence showed up. Now, we're going to go to the live charts in a moment and, uh, and show you. Okay. Next, um, beginning of the week, earlier in the week, this is our prep screen we go over. But notice we, had a, we saw, found a, a weekly demand zone in Apple. Right on a, a, a demand zone, I should say, on a weekly chart in Apple, and price was gapping down to it, or price closed right into that area. Right, um, nice turn from that qualified demand zone. But why the weekly chart here? 
And here, you know, again, we had the same zone on a 120 minute chart. Why did we choose that? We didn't. That's where the evidence was. Okay. We go, we just look for the evidence. I'm going to show you how we do that in a moment. Um, and then uh, just yesterday, right? This is just yesterday. After the market had rallied quite a bit on a very small time frame, 15 minute chart on the S&P continuous contract. So this is not just the day session. Uh, during our session, price was trading right down into our uh, what was soon to be a qualified demand zone. That's why it's a blue circle, hadn't qualified yet, um, and, and, and rallied off of there. But the point is, you can see throughout the week, getting the overall global equity index markets, you know, where is demand and where is supply? You can see, and there, there's others here, but in the interest of time, just let's just look at those, these, and, and then we'll go to live markets. But by looking at multiple time frames and multiple, you know, uh, sort of markets or symbols of those markets, right? Our goal is to identify the evidence, find the evidence that helps us see where the significant supply demand imbalances are, because that's where price is most likely to turn, right? Just like the x-ray or the MRI of the knee, even though the doctor is so skilled and has so much experience, they still look at multiple pictures and multiple images, even though they've probably looked at thousands of knees. Does that make sense? Is everybody on the same page with that? If so, let's dive into the live markets and I'll kind of show you how we do this, um, if that makes sense. Uh, Shuban, yes, yes. Uh, that that three to actually two to six candles is a good general guideline for that. Okay. All right. So let's take a look. The markets are continuing to rally a little bit this morning uh, or today. It's not the morning anymore here in uh, the U.S. Um, but let's take it. So now there's a lot of time frames on here. So um, as a now, the reason why there's so many time frames on the workspace you see here is because this is the workspace or one of the workspaces I use to deliver those pre-market sessions to our members, okay? Um, however, um, when it comes to day trading, there's a, you know, there, there are certain charts to look at. When it comes to swing trading, there's a certain workspace of time frames to look at. And when it comes to longer term investing, there's a certain amount of time frames to look at. Nobody needs to look at all of these is my point, right? I just I just show this because we, we cover day trading, swing trading, and investing all in one session. So make sure I'm not, you know, I would not suggest having a workspace like this. If you are a swing trader, for example, a swing trader, you don't need this five-minute chart here, okay? You don't need this, 50, you don't necessarily need the 15-minute chart. It's really this here, 30, 60, you know, these down here. You don't need this daily, weekly, monthly, right? So just ignore those for a minute, okay? Um, so let's look at a market. And I really don't care what market we look at. We can look at the, um, we're on the queues now. So I guess we can go to the queues. We can look at the queues here. So on the queues, and then we'll maybe go to the S&P and then maybe we'll go to the dollar. How about that? Something like that. So when it comes to supply and demand, now our, our zones are on the chart. We've already done the work. Um, we always do the work before our, our sessions with our members, right? So we go over the zones. But I want you to take a look. So um, on these swing trading timeframes, I don't know where the picture that represents a significant supply demand imbalance is going to be clear, you know, very clear. I don't know that. We never know that. So we look at a certain amount of workspaces to identify that, right? We'll usually start with a, you know, one of the kind of intermediate to bigger time frames. The number doesn't matter at all. Again, if you want to look at a 60 minute chart or a 45 minute chart, doesn't matter. There's nothing special about either, right? But um, looking here at, for example, let's go over here. Here's a pretty big time frame, right? And again, I don't care about the number. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, but I know that below the range, the current range, we have a demand zone 
at 314.85. That's a, that's a demand zone way back here. Okay. It's below the range. Right. So that zones outside of the range typically have the greatest supply demand imbalance, but that's also why price doesn't get there too often when it does. Yeah. We want to, um, you know, we're very interested in taking action there, but, um, so there's that now above the range. So something up here, I don't know, like, like here, right. There's nothing clear here on the supply side, right? So we'll look at, you know, three or four time frames. Um, I think that was the, yeah, that was that one. Here's the four hour, very clear area of supply up here, but here's the, here's the current range. So um, even though we know we have that there, what about something in here? It's still not, the, the, the chart is still not showing, uh, I'm not still not seeing the evidence and I'm not going to force anything, I'm not going to force anything. Okay. So you know, we'll, we'll keep going through our little time frames here. Aha, there is a zone. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't look like a zone, but we look at all the evidence. We don't leave any, uh, any stones unturned, right? We're always looking. So when you put that on a 24 hour chart, now you can see there's a supply zone there that qualifies for us. All of our um, analysis we follow two pillars and two pillars only, structure and location. We don't consider anything else, right? So on the location side, I'm kind of now taking you below the range, above the range here. Notice this is above the recent range, uh, certainly this week's range and last week's range and all that. Uh, this level is not fresh though, okay? So not a fresh supply zone up here. Um, but anyway, there it is. Now inside the range, we have a little area of demand that, that uh, is there. And then when we look at some of the smaller time frames to go inside the range, uh, not necessarily that one, let me see. Um, we have this right here, let me show you. So inside the range, there's a little potential area of demand that shows up here. Because it's inside the range, it's typically going to be lower probability because it's going to have a smaller supply demand imbalance. Still should be fine in the absence of big significant news, but it's inside the range. Okay. Now, um, while this zone is okay, but maybe not crystal clear, I also know that if I go over to the SPY, which is a very, you know, it's, it's almost like a, a brother or sister to the, to the QQQ, right? A lot of overlap in markets there, okay? I know, um, because I we look at these markets all week, there's that same zone, right? So you can see by looking at some multiple time frames, by looking at multiple very related markets, we can pinpoint where those significant supply demand imbalances are likely to be. But here's where the trouble comes in. If I lock into one time frame or three specific time frames, now it's going to break down. Very, that's flawed. So Naresh is asking a great question. Which time frame is most effective? And that's what I was talking about before, Naresh. Um, and I'm certainly not picking on you. There's so, tons of people have that question. But um, from my standpoint, my opinion that's uh, the answer is there is no time frame that's more effective than any other. That's the whole point. Does that make sense? There's no time frame that's more important than any other. That's like saying there's one X-ray image or one MRI image that is more important than all the others. What's going to happen as soon as we lock into that? Let let's say we're the doctor and we say, you know what? Don't take, don't take four different angles of the knee anymore. Those two, just don't take those anymore. Let's just go with these two. It'll speed things up. What's going to happen? What's the result going to be? Might happen quickly, might happen later, but it's going to happen for sure. What's going to happen? We're going to miss something and we're probably going to miss a lot of things, right? Okay. Okay. And, and, and the same kind of concept goes for, I know you're asking about moving averages in the chat. 
you know, someone will say, what's the perfect moving average or, or, you know, all of that. There, there, there is none. Let me ask you this. You know how, um, when you, when you have your trading, when you, when you open your trading platform and you pull up one of your studies, like a moving average or a CCI or one of those, um, they always come defaulted with certain settings. Like, like, I don't know, what is it? CCI. What is, what default setting does that come with on most platforms or even a moving average? What, what default setting is, is that set to when you, when you open your platform, like for the first time or whenever, what, what default settings are, are there? And then we'll move on to the NASDAQ and do our, uh, do our analysis again. Anybody what and then the second question to that is, do you know why those default settings are what they are? Right? What um, you know, like yeah, RSI, I think 30, 60, maybe, yeah, moving averages. Usually it's kind of like a is it like a 10 and 20 period moving average or a 20 period moving average? They all come with default settings. Do you know where those numbers come from? Does anybody know where those where, why those numbers are what they are? Does anybody know? Obviously, the thought everyone has is, well, you know, they, there, there's obviously a reason for those, right? Like, does anybody know? Right? No, and, and I don't know either. There, there is no reason. There's no setting that's better than any other setting. At the end of the day, what we can't get away from is how and why prices move in markets, how and why prices turn in markets. And we're talking about the trading markets here, but we could be talking about any market out there, anything. Okay, the market for cars, for food, for appliances, for clothing, for houses, doesn't matter. It's all supply and demand, right? Nobody owns supply and demand. Even Adam Smith didn't own, doesn't own supply and demand, right? just explain it very well. What I'm trying to do, you know, attempt to do with all these videos is show you kind of generally what this likely looks like on a price chart. Okay. But so let's take a look at the NASDAQ now. Now, if we're starting out, again, we don't know, we don't know what time frame to look at. I, I you know, if I were to say, if I were to say this time frame probably has, is probably going to show us the supplier demand zone the best, I would just be guessing. Okay, we have to run through. Now, I have an algorithm. We have an algorithm that that certainly helps us do the work. But, um, but, but I want to show you how to do this kind of by hand. Um, you have to learn that first, right? So, if we look at our swing trading timeframes, which are generally these right here, right? These, not these three, and certainly not that one. More of our swing trading timeframes. We could certainly start with one of the bigger timeframes. That's this one. And we certainly see below current price. Um, we have a qualified demand zone down here. But am I going to be able to see this zone on a 60-minute chart? Probably not, right? Is it going to show up on a 15-minute chart? No, right? And and to guess where you're going to find it, it's, you know, that's not going to work. Okay. And then um, if we run through our time frames. Okay. Uh, we see here that, you know what, that demand zone doesn't really show up here. It's one candle right here, but that doesn't qualify. Uh, but below this, we have a qualified area of demand at, at the 12,900 area. Okay. And I'm just going down the time frames here. And then if I go here, right, nothing qualifies below. Nothing that that close qualifies above. That's fine. That's one of the x-ray images that we just doesn't really help us. And that's okay. If we go to the 60 minute chart, we work our way down. We say, aha, here we have a tested supply zone that we're coming into. Uh, that test, by the way, is greater than 50%. So we would not take action here. We'd expect prices to stall out a little bit, but we certainly wouldn't risk money on this uh, trading opportunity because of that, how deep that pullback was. 
And now we also have a qualified demand zone that shows up below. Make sense? And all I'm doing is working my way down these time frames. Okay. If we then go to um, the 30 minute chart, doesn't really add anything. There's another demand zone down there, but um, but that's that's way down there. Then we go down to the 15 minute chart. There's that zone we used yesterday in our session. I think I showed you that one um, a little bit ago on those on those screenshots, right? So we just looked at like five different charts to um, look at all of the evidence, look at the same market, same prices, same everything, just different windows of time. That's the whole point. Okay. Different, different windows of time. That makes sense. Okay. Um, when we go to a very different, not a different market, I mean, it's still a market. Here's the market for US dollars, right? Um, we can look on the smaller time frames. Here we we always uh, look at the bigger time frames because the dollar we use for a lot of different markets. Um, the dollar, you know, recently came up to weekly supply zone where obviously it's turning lower. Um, on the demand side, when we look at all of our um, all of our time frames here, the qualified demand zone happened to show up here with a gap, right? There's another one too. Oh, here. Well, not that one. Let's see. Not that. I don't have the other one in front of me at the moment. There we go. Okay. But again, you're not, you're not going to, you're only going to see these on this time frame or something close to this time frame. But in advance, we don't know that. That's the whole point. Okay. So it's all about having a, a workspace with a certain amount of, you know, three, four different time frames. The, the making, making sure the time frames are very different from each other is much more important than what the time frames actually are. Okay. Uh, here's a good one to look at. So the blue circle, that's why you don't jump the gun and uh, anticipate, you, you know, um, a blue circle means it may become a supply zone, but it needs to qualify. And for qualifying, it would have to go below this. And I don't believe it did, almost, uh, but didn't qualify. So that wouldn't qualify for us. Okay. So, um, again, I didn't want to take up too much time, but I wanted to certainly share this whole concept of multiple time frame analysis and the, the, the goal for me for this session was to at least open your mind and your eyes to the fact that um, there's not one time frame or another that means any more than any other time frame. There's not one indicator or oscillator or setting of an indicator or oscillator that means any more than any other. This is all an ongoing supply and demand equation, right? The turn in price happens at price levels where supply and demand are most out of balance. Okay. So, uh, and, and, and again, I thought, you know, this topic is important. Again, we can dive much, much deeper into this, right? And um, we can go over, you know, exactly the steps to go to, you know, uh, you know, I kind of just shared that with you, but we can do it in a much more, you know, we have more time and, and, and all that. But um I just can't tell you how many people get locked into one time frame and then another time frame, and then they tweak moving averages, you know, for five years and realize it doesn't help. So hopefully, you know, the takeaway from this session allows you to at least save time and save money. Does that make sense? All right. Try to keep these to a half hour or less. And uh, I think we've done that here. Good to be with everybody. Good to see some of you again. Great to be with you. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Again, you can always uh, join one of these uh, free workshops if you want to take this uh, all this stuff deeper. If not, we'll see you next time. All right. Hope everybody's well, and um, we'll see you. We'll see you next time.